What are we cooking today? We're cooking a no wrap brisket. We cooked it for 15 hours overnight. We didn't spray it. We didn't wrap it. All we did was enjoy it. Stay tuned. I'll show you how it turned out. What's up barbecue fans. Welcome back to the patio. My name is Jake. You're watching Rum and Cook. Now recently we did a no rack pork butt turned out amazing cooked for 17 and a half hours and I was like hey why can't I do the same thing with the brisket. So we did and here we are 13 and a half hours ago we got out a brisket. I went to Costco last night and uh, unfortunately going late on a Friday night there wasn't much of a selection. The biggest brisket they had was 11 and a half pounds. Really wanted something a little bit bigger but it is what it is. We picked up a prime brisket from Costco and started trimming that guy up. Now, first, <laughs> I spent a lot of time trimming the top. We took off some silver skin and I was, you know, very careful with my knife. I wanted to make sure that, you know, if we're going to put this on for a long time, I'm not going to be able to spray it, babysit it, look for pools or anything. So I, you know, made sure the, that the non-fat side was perfect. And then I realized, what am I doing? I'm going to cook it fat side up. So we flipped it over, we started working on the fat cap side and you know one of the things I noticed right away on this guy is that the fat on that, like normally it's a little uh, harder and this was all that really pliable soft fat and it was really really thick. I actually cut into it several times just to see how deep the fat cap was because I couldn't really tell. Um, so I struggled a little bit to get it trimmed down. It wasn't as pretty as I wanted but I'm not a brisket trimming expert. It is what it is. And now that I've got it all trimmed up, I'm gonna get out a binder. Now, one of my subscribers introduced me to this stuff. It's called the W sauce. It's like Worcestershire sauce, uh, but more intense and it's a little thicker. And actually, I love it. So I can't remember who commented, but I went and bought it right away. Actually, I shipped a bottle of it to my dad in Canada because uh, I knew he would love it as well. Uh, so we use that as a binder. Uh, not really going to give it too much of a flavor, maybe a little bit of a mild tone underneath there, but really it's, it's thicker, so the salt pepper is going to stick to it. Now, what I'm doing with my pepper now is I've started buying large bags of 16 mesh pepper that is pre-ground. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit into a bottle at a time so I can keep it as fresh as possible. When it's not in a bottle, I've got it wrapped up in a Ziploc bag real tight, uh, so that way it's going to stay fresh. And I'm putting in my diamond kosher salt into a little container, same with my seasoned salt. First, we put a nice heavy coat of black pepper on it. And then we put on some diamond kosher salt. And then we put on some Laurie seasoned salt. So basically, ratio is about 50% pepper, 25 of each salt. So now we've got a good coating on the bottom side. We flip it over. We do the exact same thing to the fat cap side get a nice coat on there, make sure it's looking good, and then we let that rest for about 30 minutes. Came outside, out to the odor, we put on the thermal jacket, because it, again, it was cold last night, it was going down to uh, the low 20s, about 23, 24, uh, so not as bad as when we did our no wrap pork. The interesting thing is we are a little over 13 hours since we put the brisket on the odor. I'm using pecan pellets, we're running at 200, and I haven't touched it, I haven't sprayed. And we've gone through maybe 10 or 11 pounds of pellets. Today is about 35 outside, so it's not warm. The sun's out, it's nice, but it's interesting to see, you know, I went through 30 pounds of pellets in 17 and a half hours with that no wrap pork. And with those 50 mile an hour winds, or 50 mile an hour gusts, 20 to 30 mile an hour winds, and 16 Fahrenheit, I mean, it burned through some pellets. And now you can see, if it doesn't get that cold, and we don't have all the high winds, we're burning a reasonable amount of pellets, right? 10, 11 pounds really isn't that bad in a 13 hour cook in the winter time. So now that it's been 13 hours and 15 minutes cook time, we've been running at 200 degrees, the brisket is now at 192, and I have not sprayed it, haven't looked at it, haven't touched it. Let's have a look. Wow, look at 
that color. This one edge is a little crispy. The backside edge, just on right at the highest point, on the point, <laughs> um, but not too bad. It's looking really good. Wasn't sure what to expect. Feeling uh, a little tacky on the bottom, uh, maybe a, a little bit harder. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna dial it up to 225. We wanna get that moving along. And then I'm gonna use my thermo pen. We're gonna check it out for tenderness throughout it and pull it off 203, 204. Then I'm gonna have a much closer look at it and figure out what we're gonna do for our next step. It's been 15 hours now. It's officially past noon. That means I can have a rum and coke. Cheers. Interesting story. So last night I go to Costco to pick up my brisket. Of course I gotta get some coke while I'm there. Well, they were out of regular coke and they had the Coke Zero sugar there and I'm like, you know, kinda of wanting to try it. Uh, just not that it's completely better for you, but it's a, a little bit better. But anyhow, so I'm like, all right, you know what? I'm just gonna take a case of that. So I opened it up, had a sip of it, and I was like, wow, this is way better than I expected. So I run her upstairs to my wife, let her, and she didn't like it at all. She's like, no, I can't take our artificial sweeteners. I just, I don't like them. I'm like, it's actually, it's not that bad to me. So I come downstairs, I make myself a rum and Coke. I take a sip of it and I yell up, I'm like, Clearly I don't drink Coke by itself often enough. This tastes terrible with rum and Coke. It's not remotely the same. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It's tolerable. It's way better than Diet Coke, but it's just not the same. Sorry, Coke. Anyhow, like I said, it's been 15 hours. We have a thing of beauty here. Let me show you what we got going on. I mean, it is looking fantastic. It's reading rate at 200. Some parts it's reading lower, uh, but it, it, I mean, we're talking butter. The highest reading I can get out of is 200. It's actually a little bit too tender, I think. This is why, you know, I talk about thermo pens. There's a link below my, in my videos, all of these, like you gotta have one of these because, you know, there's temperature and then there's the feel of the meat. This is like soft, warm butter. It's just going straight through. It's good to have this to be able to probe your meat and get an idea of what you're dealing with. We're gonna pull this out and have a closer look. I can definitely turn this off. And to give you guys a reference here, I've got a ton of pellets left. I don't know, I'm gonna say I went through like 14 pounds uh, so less than a pound an hour in cold weather. It's uh, a balmy 36 out right now. So it's not, not super warm. But if we look at this guy, we're dark on the bottom. A little crispy, especially right here, but I mean, pliable just this end is a little a little tough you can see some juices using it there we got an end here that's a little tough but everywhere else it's nice and pliable. I was a little worried because I didn't spray it at all that uh, we might have a problem. There are a couple pieces that are gonna have a little bit of a bite to them, but I mean, if you do the foil bolt method, you're really getting some crunch on your bark in, in a, like an offset. So I'm not too concerned about it. My backup plan was if this was a little too crunchy for my taste. What I was gonna do is I was actually gonna sous vide it. Um, you know, throw it in there for a few hours, let it cool down first, throw it in there for a few hours and see if that helped tenderize a little bit. 
I don't think I need to do that. I think, I think we're okay. What I am gonna do, even though this is a no wrap brisket, is I'm gonna wrap it up uh, just for the resting portion. I don't wanna wrap it up in foil because I don't want it to rise in temperature and steam or anything like that. I want uh, the paper to absorb some of the moisture. So we're gonna do that. always wash the outside of the glass. All right, let's get this guy wrapped so we can get it rested. And there we go. So we're gonna let this rest for a good hour. It's been 57 minutes. I think we're close enough. Now, normally I like to rest two or three hours, but I'm starving. Only one way to find out how we did. Got some moisture in there, not as much as I would like. Pulls apart nicely. Flavor is actually very good. Wow. Let's get in a little deeper. As we get to the inside, I mean, <laughs> I, think, I think we're in good shape. There's a big wedge of fat there. Point's looking great. Flat's a little dry. Point is definitely not. I want to try a piece of the outside of the point here just because I know it's got a little chew to it just from the bark. It's a little bit of chew, but really not that bad. Great smoke ring. I'm pretty happy with it, I'm, I'm surprised. I was worried it would be completely destroyed but I really like the taste of the bark and the, and the flat tastes good. Don't kick me out of the barbecue club, but I actually prefer the flat over the point for a lot of it. Uh, I just don't, the point's generally a little too, too fatty for me unless I trim out some of the, the middle fat. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, 15 hour cook, I didn't have to babysit it. I didn't have to spray it. I didn't have to get up and wrap it. In fact, the only thing I had to do really was go on my phone and turn it up from 200 to 225 and sit and wait. The flat is a little drier uh, than I would like, but the one thing I'll, uh, I will remind you, at 200 degrees, this thing was probing super, super tender. Uh, I th 
think in hindsight, what I would have done is I would have pulled it off maybe an hour earlier, uh, just because of how there was no resistance whatsoever. And I think maybe because we wouldn't pass a certain point, uh, we would have lost a little bit of moisture. Like it, we still get the dangle test, but it is starting to break apart, right? Uh, but for a first attempt at a no wrap brisket, I'm gonna call it a winner. Recommend you trying it. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new or just appreciate the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. We just passed 2,500 subscribers. Next stop, 10 grand. Help me get there. I appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Doing new videos every Monday. I'll see you soon.